Now let's take it back to where it all first started, Greenville, North Carolina, and the home of East Carolina University. Now this is a nice and small, quiet town, not too big at all. And the school itself is primarily known for It's me. So I started my humble beginnings as a freshman in the dorms. And then eventually going to make my own MTV Cribs episode at my first college apartment. Yo, what up, MTV? I'm Justin, this is my crib. Don't hate the To eventually not only being a part of, but recording one of the biggest pool parties ever to hit the city. I did the 21 shots when I turned 21. Even dressed up as Muhammad Ali. And eventually helped record and host the same parties I used to enjoy. And eventually recorded some stuff I'm not too proud of. But anyway, back to me. So eventually I got into this point in my life where I said, you know what? This corporate thing is just not working out for me. My co-workers are my homeboys, but you know what? I got to go. So one day, I went home, I got on my computer, I saw something about a Disney college program, I applied, I got in, and from there it was history. I bought a new car. And then there's my apartment. Yes, it was the bachelor's pad, but seeing it go from this to this, that's when it kind of hit me. But with that said, putting everything in storage means there was no turning back. And ironically, the day I left for Florida was the same day we had a huge snowstorm. What a surprise. Orlando, Florida, and my new home. Such a beautiful place. Actually, hold up, hold up, let me take that back. <clears throat> Lake Buena Vista, Florida, because that's where my apartment was located. Vista Lake, <clears throat> excuse me, Way Apartments. Now for me, I was out on a mission to see exactly what I left my life for for this new place down here. So the first place I checked out was the pool, which was pretty decent. Then there was a gym as well. Not too shabby. There was a mail room. It was kind of weird to have a mail in the room, but whatever. It is what it is. Then there was these guys, and I'm thinking, what in the world? Did I move into a zoo? What's going on? And then you had the bus area. Now, for me, thinking to myself, hey, I just bought a new car. I mean, dang, I still got tags on it. There's no reason why I would need to ride a bus for. Like, what the heck? Well, hopefully, it'll be up and running soon. But better safe than sorry. Then you also have your basketball courts. And then I remember walking past these and thinking, hmm, I wonder what these are out here for? Who wants to come outside to wash their clothes? So then I checked in and did all the boring stuff and now it was finally time to meet my roommates. And right here you have my boy Reggie. Now when I first met him, he was in the kitchen cooking. So I made a joke and said, hey, you a chef or something? He said, yeah, I'm a Disney chef. I work at one of the restaurants. And it just kind of blew my mind like, oh, cool. I got a chef living with me. And then he said, there's another one too. My boy Matt over here. And so I met him, same thing. He can cook as well. So I'm like, oh my goodness, what's going on? Your boy's living with chefs. And these dudes would throw down. Can you pronounce for us again? And then there was our almost elder of the group, Mike. Um, I say elder because he was the oldest out of all of us, but he was still really cool, really chill. And JT. He was never in the apartment. I rarely saw him. I saw him this one time at the parks, so I had to record it. But that's my boy JT. 
And then last but not least, we have this gentleman, Mr. K. I won't use his real name, but I will tell you this. He didn't stay around that long. Um, unfortunately, he ended up getting arrested. Um, yes, arrested by um, police because he attempted to attack a stripper that lived at Vista Way. Enough said. Um, now we're moving on to the casting department. So this is where we initially first went to basically kind of check in everything. Now for this portion right here, it's usually going to be packed with plenty of people during the intern season time. But thankfully I was able to get a video when it was completely empty. Uh, now this place has a bunch of offices and it pretty much gets you hype and ready to work for Disney. Then you take another bus ride through the magical Disney World arches. Where you end up stopping at a place called Disney University. Now this is a place that many people are familiar with. This is the first thing you do before you actually start your job. And by the end of everything, they take you through a secret door and this is the first thing you see. Yes, you literally end traditions and you go straight to Main Street USA and right in front of the parade. It was literally one of the most memorable, just exciting things I've ever seen in my life. And that's when it hit me. I'm actually working for Disney World. And then you stop to get lunch at surprisingly what was gonna be my next employment for the next year, Pinocchio's Village House. And just like that, I went from working in a hospital to a restaurant at the Magic Kingdom. Now one thing that did kind of suck was how this entire restaurant was themed around Pinocchio, but he never actually came to the restaurant. And people would ask all the time, when's Pinocchio showing up? We would always reply, we don't know, we don't ever see him. Um, but one thing I did notice when I was touring the restaurant for the first time was everybody was wearing these silly looking clothes. And the only thing I could do in the back of my mind was think, man, there's no way in the world they're going to get me to wear these silly clothes. Just a quick FYI, that was Sarika, and she was one of the coolest people I've ever met. So I finally decided to go ahead and go down to the costuming department and get my actual work outfit, and I still couldn't believe my eyes. Like, this was my future, wearing costumes to work every single day. Honestly, I just didn't know what was next. Now, these are three people that I ended up meeting on day one and end up having the best connections with. Start with my boy, Mac. He was cool, down to earth, and just chill, just like myself. And then there was my boy, Shunya. Same thing, except for he was from Japan and barely spoke any English, but he was always down for an adventure. And then my girl, Shi. She was from China, barely spoke that much English, but at the same time, she always wanted to do something different, and that was A plus in my book. But more on them later. I finally grabbed my main gate passes, and it was time to head to these parks and live the Disney life. So me and my new homie, Mac, decided to go to this place called Hollywood Studios and make my first ride ever there, the Hollywood Tower of Terror. Now behind us there were some people singing that I guess they could see I was a little tense. So they started to sing to me and let me record it. Take a listen. It worked. And after all the singing we finally make it to the elevator to finally ride the Tower of Terror. It actually wasn't that bad. So afterwards we say, let's go ahead and check out the rock and roller coaster. So after all that, I finally decide it's time to head back home. And of course I get stuck in Orlando traffic, but honestly, this is my life from now on. 
When I get home, I see Mr. K, and he's all soaking wet and looking really goofy. So I'm like, yo, man, are you okay? He tells me, hey, dude, guess what? I met some really cute girls, and they tell me if I jump in the pool fully clothed, they'll party with me tonight. And so I'm sitting there thinking, okay, so me and Mr. K head to this party. Now, I was kind of excited, kind of nervous. So I'm like, man, what has this guy gotten into? Who are these girls going to look like? And oh my goodness. Now for this particular event, I didn't bring my camera. I didn't even have my cell phone with me. I was truly ready to be disappointed. But these girls end up being cool and they look so good. It kind of reminded me when I made this video. Except for they were cool, they were classy, and they were interns just like me. And that was just day one, man. Yes! Part two. Now by this time period, a few weeks have went by, and I've actually started to enjoy my life down here at Disney World, and kind of got into the routine of things. You know what? Let me explain. It goes like this. Head to work, get stuck in traffic. Make it to work. See a nighttime show. Get back home and deal with the AC being broke. Head to work again to get stuck in traffic. Make it to work. See crazy raccoons coming out the trash cans in the parking lot. See the nighttime show from the parking lot at your job's break room. And then hurry and make it to another park to see another nighttime show before it closes. On my days off, things were a little bit different. Of course, you still will head to the parks. You walk past your job instead of going inside. You get to ride some rides, have a good time. And then, of course, you got to see a nighttime show. Now, even though everything seemed nice and dandy, there were a few things about my job I just did not initially first like. Again, let me explain. Now at my particular job, which we nicknamed PVH, there were actually three sets of cliques. There was the part-timers clique, the people who barely came, came and went, you really didn't know who they were, you barely saw them. There were the full-timers, the people that were always there, and then there were the interns slash CPs, um, which basically I should have been a part of. Now the reason why I say I wasn't a part of that group at the time was because when I first started, there were only two black male interns slash CPs. Myself and this other gentleman that was actually a cheerleader and who had been there for about six months And so basically people kind of wrote me off because I had the look of a part-timer or a full-timer And then the full-timers and part-timers wrote me off because they didn't like CPs and unlike the actual CPs They looked at my dang name tag which said East Carolina University So they knew I was an intern and I wasn't gonna be a part of their group in regards to the actual CPs all they wanted to do after work was go and drink and party. And I'm just thinking like, man, your boy's already done all that stuff before. Like, that's the whole reason why I came down here. Not to mention, every time they would get off, a lot of them didn't have cars. So they would have to ride that smelly, hot, packed, stinky bus. And it would take them about an hour just to get actually home. And then some of them wouldn't take showers. Like, no. Your boy had a nice, fresh car in the parking lot. 
So instead of hanging out with them, what I ended up doing was... Yep, that was me and my boy Shinya on the world's tallest slingshot. We also did some go-karting as well. And of course we went to the parks. Shinya really liked the show, he liked to eat the ice. Me and she did some horseback riding at Fort Wilderness. We also took this cute little boat ride. Some days we would just chill at the pool. Look at that little clown. Look just like him. Man, this dude right here scared me so bad. We even took a ride on the world's tallest swings. Now this right here is when I think I lost my mind. So she wanted to learn how to drive and I told her she could use my car. The entire time I thought about this scene from Gone in 60 Seconds. She actually didn't do that bad though, and thankfully my car stayed in one piece. The sad part is she never actually passed her test because she drove on the wrong side of the road, so that kind of sucked. So we ended up making up for it and going to get some food at a lot of different restaurants. Then there's my boy Mac. We said forget this, we live in Florida now. So the first thing we did was we went down to South Beach, Miami went on a jet ski tour and just had a great time. We even went to this paint party. It was pretty fun, we met some cool girls we ended up chilling with. It was an amazing time. Then here's my girl Caitlin. She was really cool and really laid back like myself. I think I ended up meeting her at the trash can area at work and she just happened to talk to me. I said, hey, I'm Justin, and we just ended up chilling and hanging out. She actually loved going to the parks like myself, so it was just kind of like, let's do this. Eventually I started showing Caitlin all my secret spots I would take my homies to and eventually she started showing me all the different restaurants I was missing out on at Disney. But this right here was actually the pinnacle of restaurants that we went to and I'll let her explain why. We got a McDonald's worker. You don't have to pack up. Say hey, Kayla. I would just like to say that I used to work in a McDonald's, and this place is so much more badass than that place. Before. You hear that? Straight from McDonald's employees. Yeah, it was pretty ridiculous. I mean, which McDonald's can you go to and get a Philly cheesesteak and some pizza from? Ironically, I just picked up a McDouble and just called it a day. And then we have this ride right here, which was Caitlin's favorite ride. And she ended up making me love this ride as well. I don't know why. And right here you have Victor and Emily. Now they're from the UK. And one thing they don't have over there they wanted to try over here was a gun range. So that's what we did. Say hi, Shinya. <laughs> it's not a picture, it's a recording. It's a video. It's a video. <laughs> huh? Video. I can't eat. I'm just hungry. Yes, you can. Oh! oh. <laughs> Eventually got to the point where all my friends together started going to the parks, and that's when it really got fun. Uh, 
Now this is where it pays to actually be an intern. You get to take behind the scenes tours and do special things. Like for this instance, we were actually going to see Space Mount with the lights on. And these two creeps you saw behind me, those were actually my homies, Sarika and Makiko. I ended up becoming friends with them as well, going to places like Ripley's and the world of chocolate and just having a blast. So yeah, it was actually pretty cool to be in Tomorrowland with nobody around. I mean, you never ever see that, and even as an employee, unless you work there, you're not allowed to come to that area when it's that quiet and that peaceful. So that was actually pretty cool. Oh, hey, Kristen. And right here is my boy, Medi. He actually became one of my roommates. Remember Mr. K? Yeah, he replaced him once he got arrested. Now, as far as this tour, we actually couldn't do it for whatever reason. The ride was actually broke when we were scheduled to go and do it. So we actually didn't get to see it that day. But I did go and see it at a future day when I was actually there in the parks just chilling and the ride broke down. So it was actually pretty cool. Now, we also did other tours like the Haunted Mansion tour, the Tower of Terror tour, Animal Safari tour. Like, we did so many other behind-the-scenes tour. It was actually really, really cool. But hands down, my favorite thing to do at the Disney College program was... Ah, uh, Starlit Splash. This place was so much fun. I really can't go into detail of why it was so much fun, but honestly, just show these videos. I mean, just think about it. You get to go as an intern to a water park at nighttime with no guests, unlimited food, unlimited rides. It was just a blast. There goes that Kristen again. It was surreal to be in a wave pool at nighttime. And even more surreal to be used as a human life preserver when I can't swim. Even my boy Shinya made it to the party and did some dancing for us. And when I say party like this place went down. But honestly, this is when I knew that good times must come to an end. Now this right here was a very sad but special day. Now I first say it was special because not only did I have my friends from Japan, but also my friends from China all come together as one with this black guy to hang out. I say it was sad because it was my friend Virginia's last day, and then soon it would be Shi's and Shunya's and Makiko's, it would just go down the list, and it was just really hard to see all my friends leave. But I will tell you this, we made the best of it. <laughs> and for me it actually really sucked because a lot of my friends that left I was the one to take them to the airport so I literally was the last person to see them sometimes in America and then to never see them again afterwards and remember that group of interns that was a little clique that I told you about that thought I was part time when I first started, I used to always see them crying. I would always think to myself, man, what is so serious that makes these people cry when they leave? And then it finally hit me. This is it. This is your, like your family. 
man, it just sucks thinking about it. Even my homegirl Caitlin was out. So what I did, I arranged a little surprise for her at my job. Check it out. Oh boy. Yes. Part three, and I'm back at it. So a few weeks have went by, and things have started to settle down a bit. We got some new interns, and I kind of just went back into my shell. All I could really do was think about the good times with my old friends, like the days when I would make she her first alcoholic drinks, and she would talk about it on Facebook, or the days of cooking my homegirls breakfast one after another, and just that expression on her face when they're like, "Oh my God, this food is so good." Even my boy Shunya. I mean, we honestly never held a whole full conversation, but him not being around, I mean, things were just not the same. So what did I end up doing? Well, I got married at work. So yeah, this happened. Um, now, I won't go into too much detail about it right now. I'm going to save this for the last part of my video, which is going to be the epilogue, part four, um, as far as the circumstances and everything that caused this to happen. But yeah, it was a nice little gag. Now, to keep the joke rolling, I also posted about this on Facebook, and people I hadn't talked to in years and went crazy about it. And just as a quick reminder of why I hated social media. With that said, I chumped out and put a little apology up and kept it moving. Um, but ironically, this is around the time period when I actually did start making new friends. So right here is my boy Rich. This was actually my new roommate. I had to move to a different apartment complex after I extended my program for a second term. And as you saw, yes, Rich was another chef. And right here you got my girl Sally. She was so cool, she was really nice and sweet, and she loved to hang out and just go to the parks and just chill. Funny story with my girl Sally. So we were chilling at Epcot and there was a Boys to Men concert going on. Now she didn't know who they were or what their songs were, but we were literally at the very back of the line and there was some CP that saw us and was like, hey y'all some CPs? Let me get you a good seat. So he literally let us cut all these people and ended up getting us a really good seat. And we had a good time, check it out. Then 
Then there's my girl Jenny. She was actually really, really cool. And surprisingly, she wasn't a part of the program. She actually was a part-timer. We started to hang out and go to the parks as well. And she actually decided to make her first time in the Tower of Terror with me out of all people. So you know me, I definitely had to record it. Check it out. And then right here is my homegirl Liz from ECU. Now she wasn't in the program, she didn't live in Florida, but she came down to visit and we ended up hanging out and having a good time. And got to explore my favorite resort on property, the Grand Floridian. And also the boardwalk too. So after checking out the boardwalk, I finally realized, man, there's so much more outside of Disney than those dang theme parks. So once again, I was out on a mission. This time starting with the wide world of sports. And man, this place was huge. Not to mention it came with our own little tour guide. But by this time I realized something needed to change. Like I needed like a partner in crime or like a wingman. A road dog, a homie, and then there was Xander. So this is my boy Xander. He was a part-timer and he actually started around the same time that all my initial friends left. The dude was just cool. So the truth is, around that time period since he was new, he didn't have many close friends. And since all my close friends just left, we decided just to become boys. And it was so funny but also kind of sad just to see how much my coworkers used to hate on us just for being boys and hanging out. They always had something to say. Alright, so here we go. We got Fix It Feeler Jr. He's gonna wreck it. That's Anna over there, bouncing. Well, I'll be honest, at least for this one time right here, we kinda deserved it. But I don't care, man. These chairs felt amazing. This thing is getting it. We're getting the massage down. Oh, this thing really, oh. Oh my God, this thing is really Oh yeah, RIP Disney Quest. That place was amazing. And since me and my boy Xander actually worked at the same place, we got to do the behind the scenes tours together as well. This one was actually the behind the scenes tours for the Animal Safari at Animal Kingdom. It reminded me of a class field trip. We also got to see Back to the Future 2, which is my favorite movie on earth, in theaters on October 21st, 2015, at the exact time the movie. In theaters. And wow, what an experience. Me and my boy Xander also got to see ECU play down here against UCF and we smashed them. And then we eventually got to the point where we were just burnt out from Disney so we started to do other things like go to the mountains in West Virginia and hit up Gatorland and play with some snakes and feed some crazy alligators. <laughs> Alright so here we are feeding alligators. So over we even hit up the Orlando Eye on the first day that it opened, and man, that thing was scary. Okay, YouTube, so I'm kind of freaking out right now because ironically, I am scared of heights. And 
but surprisingly I had one more set of guests that wanted to come down and visit before my program was over. So yes, after being down here for about six months, my family finally came down to come see me. Now before we get started, I'm sure you all are wondering why in the world if that's your family is there a blur on the actual video? So one of my sisters made a request and she said, please Justin, don't put my face in the video. I don't like to be seen online. And so the whole time I'm thinking, well maybe this is a joke and I'm gonna have a good time making the video and adding everybody in there. Or maybe not, maybe she's gonna get mad and have me arrested like my boy Cuba Gooden. So I didn't wanna risk it. I just went on ahead and blurred her out. Now I actually have two sisters. The one sister that wanted to be blurred out, she actually lived in Miami at the time, so she actually came here twice. And all I can say is she loves those free tickets. My other sister actually came down here with her entire family, um, and it was a really, really good time. As you can see, another ride that we got to ride that's no longer in existence. And right here on Star Tours, my nephew got to be the secret spy two times in a row and he was so excited. And this right here is my oldest sister freaking out on the Tower of Terror. It was hilarious. Just listen to the crowd. And thankfully they didn't make it an all Disney trip. They checked out some other stuff as well. So here's our score. She beat me. Stand back there. Gotta love family. Now before I end this documentary, I have to emphasize the quality of food that you can eat while doing this college program at Disney World. That's of course if you can afford it. Even though I was working and getting underpaid and losing weight, man, I was eating good. And the restaurants themselves are beautiful. I mean, just check out Be Our Guest. But you know what? It's coming to that time. I cannot stress enough how many events they had during my college program at Disney World. And to be honest, I can't remember them all either. The way I personally kept up with things was by just looking at the castle. I mean, it always changed with the seasons. Now, one of the last events that I actually do remember is something called CP Formal Nights. Now, me and my homegirl Sally ended up going together. Now, we almost didn't make it. We had to close that night at work, and so we ended up telling our manager that we actually had to go to prom, and she was like, oh, prom, how cute. Y'all can get off early, so we ended up making it. It was pretty cool. All right, so here we are at the prom. Say what's up, Azrael. And right here is my boy, Azrael. He was real cool and down to earth. Say what's up, Sally. She knows how this goes. It's for my documentary, man. <laughs> Alright, so we're going on the tour. It was actually a really nice and organized event. I was really surprised. And also, you remember this guy, Jack Skeleton from the castle? And that's Jack right there. So cool. Well, yeah, he made an appearance too.
I also got to go and see the Osborne Lights. This actually is no longer there at Hollywood Studios, so it's really cool to be one of the last groups to ever see this. And then right before graduation, I made a bucket list to go and see every Disney landmark and take a picture of it. And here's that plethora right here. So what's up? I'm kind of tired, but today we are going to graduation. At the end of the program. The documentary got messed up, but it's all good. Nice day. A lot of people out here. Anyway, let's go. So yes, it was finally that time, and I finally graduated with my boy Xander by my side. It was weird because your family doesn't come down for it, but I had my Disney family, so it felt the same. But what happens next? Got some brownies from some guy. And some burnettes. And look what we got. Got a TV, got some subs. Got Xander with the video games. Look at this. But anyway, it's another day at work, another day with me. Your boy Justin. Peace. So yes, as you can see, your boy went from working from Disney to working at Universal Studios. Now ironically, I actually stayed at Universal Studios for the same amount of time I stayed at Disney, one full year. Thanks to my boy Xander, I was able to move all my stuff down from North Carolina down to Florida. And for my first day, we didn't go see a parade. We actually went and rode the mummy, which was my first time on that ride, and it was amazing. Now, working for Universal has almost the same benefits as Disney, except for their discounts are a whole lot better. So for example, I got to stay at all the different resorts on property for half off. I got to get 40% off at all the restaurants and even got to do behind the scenes tours for free for pretty much all the attractions. This one right here was really funny because my sister, she's actually scared of ET and she's actually older than me. And so I sent her these videos and she was freaked out. It never hurts to see my favorite car in the world every day at work. And not only did I get to be one of the first people to ride the new Hulk when it reopened, but I also got to go to the team member only event, which had a huge Hulk cake. This is it. Everything set up for the team members. It's gonna be amazing. There's no Mickey, but there is Barney. So yeah, my short time at Universal was cool. I worked in security, so I mean, that had its ups and downs, but it was pretty fun. But let's rewind the clock back because you know what? This is a Disney documentary. So let's talk about my Disney disappointments.
This is the road to Disney World. Hidden among the souvenir shops are Florida's new homeless. 500 children living in some 67 motels along this strip. I'm going to just put it out there. Disney is a company. They're cheapskates. As an intern, I literally made a dollar less than people that had been there beside me for 10, 20 years. It was ridiculous. Even my area manager, she was above maybe two, 300 people. She was the area manager, so the top of the top for my area only made 40,000. Like, that is just sad. A lot of the people I work with, a lot of the adults that work with me, they had roommates, they lived in their cars. I mean, Disney is just known for ripping people off. And I mean, I'll be honest with you, I made 950 an hour and for an intern, that was fine, but that's nothing I could live off of, especially down in Florida. And one last thing, they treated us like slaves. We had to do some of the hardest work for the cheapest labor. Like for example, this guy, mopping in the rain. Actually, you know what, I take that back. He did that because he wanted to. He was just weird. Y'all remember my girl, she? Well, because of this sweet, innocent girl, I actually got this nickname of Mr. Still Your Girl. Now, long story short, it wasn't her fault at all. It was actually because of this guy. It was this 45-year-old guy that preyed on young Asian girls. And he went crying to one of my managers saying that I stole her from him because he liked her and we were actually a couple. It was actually ridiculous. But the reason why I bring that up is because this is the type of drama you're going to have at Disney World. It's just a bunch of young girls, young kids that literally have nothing else better to do with their time than sit around and gossip. I couldn't stand it. And especially when me and my boy Xander started going out, they always, always had something to say. So this actually brings me to some of the last things I actually didn't like at Disney World, which is the drinking. Like I said, when I first got down here, I made friends that people that didn't want to do that type of stuff. But for the second part of my program, the second six months, that's literally all I was around. So I had no choice either didn't hang out with anybody or hang out with a bunch of drunks. And so I didn't want to be alone and end up doing that same old thing all over again. And it just sucked because it wasn't as fun as it was actually in college when it was new to me. It just felt like I was just going with the motions. Now, I'm not saying that some of these people are bad. There are some really trashy people, and I will go ahead and blur their face out because I can't stand them. But I just honestly, as far as the other people, they're not bad people. I just got tired of drinking. To summarize, the negatives of my Disney college program comes down to one thing. My job. Now, when it comes to my job and the true feelings I had for it, it might just surprise you. Actually, no, it won't, because I hated it. Every day when I walked into work, it felt like I was being attacked by gorillas just coming to get me. Man, it was a dang jungle. I promise you, sometimes I would look at the ceiling and I would just see a monkey just swinging on by. And some of the people I met there, mainly the women, oh my god, they were just trashy and just, ugh. You can get an STD by just looking at them. Thankfully, none of those women actually showed up in this video. But to summarize my Disney College program, it was amazing and I wouldn't take anything back. I don't regret anything. It truly changed my life. Now, your boy did not become Mr. Steer Girl, but I will tell you what I did become. And here we are. I am Mr. Bucket List, and that was my Disney College program documentary. Yes.